Are you looking for about page examples? Well, you come to the right place. So design-wise, an about us page or about me page, however you want to call it, depending on your size of your business, is pretty much like every other page in terms of design layout. It's not as complicated as to get a professional design as you might think. Um, you just gotta think of it in terms of a landing page because when someone comes to your about page, they're not actually really looking for like that about story or that about um, like summary of your backstory and everything. And about us page is almost like a landing page, a portal to those things. So that's kind of how you want to frame your about page because there's so much content that you could actually cram onto an about page that you actually want to make it a landing page that goes off to these smaller subsets. So with that in mind, let me give you some examples of a lot of sites that have done it right. So we've got three sites that have done it correctly and one site that it's a really big site and they didn't do a good job. So let me, let me show you what I've got. So let me share my screen. Here. Yeah. All right, let me get my Zoom information out of the way here. Okay, so this first page is the change.org's about page. Now this is a true blue about page. Like they didn't try to cram anything weird on here. Like it's it's a very good layout. And this is how I would suggest my clients to do that. So what they did was they had a gigantic hero graphic. This big image at the top, for those that don't know, is called a hero image. And they basically like, it's like the large and in charge image on the page, that's why it's called a hero. Um, what they have done is that they just put the title here in selectable text, this is not burned in text, meaning they didn't write the text on an image and then put that image on the web page. You don't wanna do that. You wanna have text be selectable, meaning you write it on the page. So they've done a great job here. It is in line with their color scheme. It's in line with what they're talking about. It's about people in the background. It's a really good image, right? Um, they have the title here, the world's platform for change, which is kind of like their motto. But what I would suggest is go one place further and have this text that's down here appear in your graphics. So when I hit the page, especially on mobile, like I want to have, okay, your platform for change and what else, <laughs> like, you know, and then they could put that information right below it. That was the only change I would make here. Um, but scrolling down, you can see how well they've laid it out. It's very easy to read, right? Like everything is partitioned out. They don't try to cram an essay on this page. It's very simple. So they've got like their major stats right here, right up front. Um, and you scroll down a little bit further, they talk about how it works. And then they've kind of got like a little slideshow going on here. I just wish that this was a little bit more prominent. You know, um, and there's no place to go to. Like, if you find something that talks about, like, you know, helping them engage, okay, well, how do I help make them engage? Like, I think it would have been helpful to have a link to more information on here, but this is okay because it's just kind of talks about their design process, basically, and that's important. And then you scroll down and you can say, see their impact, and it can go on the victories. I think it goes to like a list of all the victories that they've had overall, like how many things were petitioned and how they succeeded in other petitions. And then scrolling down, they have their call to action. This is like the exact layout that I would have suggested them to do. Like it, they have their, their couple things that they're trying to get into, interested in. They don't have any links to outside places. And that's one thing I would have changed. But down here, like they have this, but down here, they have their call to action. And this is a great part of it because they say you can open, do your own thing. Let's, let's show you how to do your own petition or let's talk about um, business side of it. So like from here, they can go to two different places and that's great. That's what you wanna do. You wanna drag them in with like your, your, your visitor in with like your story and where you came from and what's about and what makes you great and real bite-sized chunks. And at the very end, you wanna have your call to action. You want them to do something, whether it's go to another link, make a donation, um, show them your upcoming events so they can buy tickets or go shop on your site. Like, that's what kind of you want to do. You want to lead them down. It's basically a sales funnel. At the very end of it, you want them to do something. So that's this one. Let's go to About Us on Yellow Leaf Hammocks. And I actually found this when I was doing my research for the site. Like everybody and their brother links to this site and I can see why. Like it's, it's a very visually impactful site, right? Um, they have the video instead of the, the hero graphic, they have a video. And that's great as long as you find a way to keep it not massive video, you know? 
Um, again, they don't they have their ridiculously comfy hammocks and impeccable craftsmanship and transformative impact and selectable text. Good for them. But they don't have like a summary right there. And I would have added a summary. But they have it down here. And this is like their mission statement. And this is okay. I mean, it's right here. Um, I would not have the share it buttons be this tiny because someone could totally like, you know, fat finger this and like have it go off somewhere, you know, like it's just maybe they were trying to get Twitter and they got Facebook. It's just too small, you know, um, even for a point and click on a desktop. But, you know, it does give a brief overview of what they're talking about. And then scrolling down here, they have their design process. They have what they do, how they do it for and how the cycle comes back around. So they're helping like smaller families in developing countries get money. So and then it comes back, right? And then scrolling down here, they actually have like information about like how this is economically empowering. This is really good, but you notice how small it is. Like they've got a couple of pictures to kind of like give that human touch, but then they also have their text here. Now you may be noticing this problem. See how hard it is to read this text over top of this green hammock? I would fix that <laughs> because no one's gonna read this. One, because it's super tiny, and two, because it's blending in with the green text. Like you have to really kind of move around to even try to see it and it's I don't know I thought that was parallax for a minute but it's not it's definitely always over the screen one so I I would change that part of it you know um or maybe just get a picture like cut off the handles of the hammock and then just have it over here like have the hammock come over here a little bit more but I mean it's it's the right order of events right and then scrolling down, you can learn more about the story. Again, a link to somewhere else so if someone's interested in learning more about it, maybe because they can partner with them, for the example. Click here to go learn more story. And at the end of that learn more story, have another call to action to ask them to do something, whether it's contact you, look at their press or their press page or something like that, you know, like get involved. However it is, at the end of that page, have another link that has a call to action on it. And then scrolling down here. So that's kind of what this is, is that you want to have places for them to go on this landing page that goes to a page that's more defined for what they're looking for. And on that page, ask them to do something. And then you scroll down here, it's got another one. Now these things, and this is what I want to explain, is that these are called cards. Basically, they're a picture, a link. A lot of times they'll have, um, cards will have like a, like a one or two sentence, like brief amount of information, and then like a read more. Um, in this case, what they did is that they did not link these up. They, they look like cards, but then they put the read more underneath for the whole thing. And this four pillars of sustainability, this is more of their like development. And I'm sure that they go into this on another page. And then this is their backstory line. And this is really cool. So they found a different way to say their backstory or their origin story. And then they went in and talked more about it. Again, goes to another page. I'm sure there's a call to action at the end of that one. And then down here, it's kind of like more reiteration of the previous, but it's still, I, I feel like they could have left this off because they already talked about it up here a couple times, but I'm sure that they had a, a thought about it. But down here, they say be a part of it. I feel like they can make this whole section of be a part of it, but it's still good, right? And then you scroll down here and this is the call to action. Remember we talked about call to action on the change page, like over here, the change.org. This is their call to action on change.org, and this is their call to action on Yellow Leaf. And they want you to share this information, get the word out there. They want you to sign up for um, their email list. And over here, they want you to shop. So that's what I mean. If you want to send them somewhere, if you've got one place in particular you're trying to send them, make this whole section that one thing. But if you kind of got a couple like things that are all kind of you know grabbing for the apple, then you can do this, like have different ones. But I would make it much more obvious what they are. This white on yellow is going to be kind of a um, like a 508 compliant. 508 compliance for those not in the U.S. is like how the government has set up standards and they're under the 508 rule. And what it is is that for like things like color contrast or um, accessibility is what it's all about. And so if you have white on a light yellow, someone with vision issues is going to have a hard time seeing what that is. That it's a gift box. So I would just darken that color up or do like um, an orange would fit well with this color scheme as well. You know so. And the same kind of goes for the logo too. I'm sure that would be hard for someone to see. But that's their name, Yellow Leaf. So I don't know how far you want to go. But that's it for this one. And then Blue Apron. Everybody points to Blue Apron as an option too. And 
it's good, but I wanted to kind of do a take on this. So they have used their about page as their like team page, right? So they are trying to push, and I looked on their site and I could not find a true about the page. So I'm presuming that this team page is their about page. This is a recruitment page for jobs. So if you scroll down, like you can do jobs here, they've got the hero graphic, they've got the text, but then they have options for somebody to go do something. They have a call to action right off the bat, right? Like they have this big impressive image with everybody that works for them. And then they've got places for them to go. That's good. I wouldn't necessarily suggest putting the links right here under your title because you want people to scroll down so they get invested, but it, it's okay. Like I would have just moved this right here and moved this right here. Like I would have just swapped the two just to make people have more of a commitment when they come to the page. Now they have their story on the page. I don't necessarily agree with this because this is a lot of text and I can guarantee you almost nobody reads this. <laughs> Um, maybe somebody that's looking to get a job with a Blue Apron might read this so that they know have that in the back of their head for a job interview, but it's just so wordy. Like, it's not even that long, and I don't want to read it, so I would make this more interactive somehow. And then, or again, go to another page that has an interactive backstory back there. Um, and then down here, because they have the 50-50 set up here. I'm sorry, I'm going on a tangent. Or tangent. And they have our values. But what I don't like about this is that even though it's set up under like it's its own section, it's very clean. I wouldn't have known to click on these things over here. I just happened to be like, well, what is this all about? You know, we start from that. So let me click on it. Oh, it's a link. Look at that. It changes something. I would have made this more obvious, like maybe put like little arrows, like little like red carrots on here or something, just something to indicate that like, hey, this is or have it automatically cycle one or the other, just something to indicate interaction. Then over here, they have Life at Blue Apron. This is a cool feature because it changes out the graphics for each one, but like you can't click on it. You can't go anywhere to see like company culture. So these things are great, but I wanted to show you that like this is a really cool option, but it's at the bottom of the page. <laughs> like, you know, so it's not even somewhere where somebody may, you may lose somebody by this point as I'm getting at. But then down here, again, you have your call to action. Yay, you have your join the team. And then they say where they're hiring. And then they have the options for you to go to. I believe these are the same as at the top. Yeah, they're the same. We have the call to action and then check out the engineering website. So this is good. And I like the fact that they have divided it out here. So they have the social media, they have the email address, and then they have the blog. The three or four things that I tell you guys to add at the bottom for your call to action in the freebie that will be in the fourth video um, is these things, the uh, jobs, uh, blog posts, events, um, email list. Like you want your call to action to be at the bottom of the page because that's what does you good. And then just for laughs, I'm going to show you CNNs. <laughs> And to be fair, I did go look at the other news networks to see what their about pages look like too, because I didn't want anybody being like, oh, well, you looked at CNN and you didn't look at Fox or whatever, but I did. They don't have about pages. <laughs> so we're gonna go with CNN's about page because it was just so terrible. It was so terrible. Like I just, I needed to show it. So basically this entire page is nothing but text. This is like you're reading a news article and it's not even like, even the news articles have video and photos dispersed throughout. This is just straight text. Nobody's gonna read this because it's divided out so bad. And a lot of people's about pages look like this. It's just an essay. And there's actually a lot of links in here. Like there's links to their daily programming, their anchors. Um, they could have totally like made like, they could have had a hero graphic with their, um, like this is their uh, mission statement. They could have had a hero graphic with like a brief thing about this and then listed the mission statement under it or to the right of it. They could have done so many things just for the hero graphic. And they got so much video, they really could have put a video right here, like a promo video, and then had the text off the right. They could have done something that grabs a person and sucks them into this page. But then it's down here, they could have, they have all their sections. They could have just divided this out, you know, like, get a list of CNN's daily programming, get the anchors. They could have had the anchors on cards, right? And then a link to their bios. That would have been great. The studio tour, that's really cool that they would take somebody around and show them all the different things. And then the parent company, um, they could have had like the, the Warner uh, Media logo and then just had like a parent company click for more information or click to go to a specific page on the Warner, like talk about that page. Like they could have really divided this out. But even if you get to the bottom of it, 
there's no call to action. I mean, this is all the privacy statement, right? Yeah, the reprint and copyright information, and there's the privacy statement. Like all this legalese could have been linked to in the footer. Like it did not need to be on this page. So I just wanted to show an example of what a common about page kind of looks like as people just throw stuff up and they don't think about it. And that's the end of it. So I would highly suggest maybe be working this. <laughs> if you want some tips, I'm, I'm open. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. Um, go ahead into the next video. The next video is going to be about uh, yeah, the about me page generator and the about me page generator. Um, if I don't put it up today, I'll put it up um, tomorrow or Wednesday. But the about me page generator, I'm going to go over all the different kinds of generators that I have found online and um, kind of lead to mine as well. Um, there's, there's good ones and there's bad ones, but we're going to talk about them. Okay, that's it for now, guys. So don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next about me template in this series. So there is, like I said, a freebie on the fourth one. So you want to stay tuned because it shows a mock-up of an about page that you can print out and use when you're putting everything together. And then it also includes a how-to. So you know what actual words you should be using in these spots. It's not just like throw anything out there. There's actual thought behind the design for each one of these sections. And then um, you want to get in on that. So in the meantime, hit subscribe and ring the bell. Take care and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks. Bye.